for our next news special report. In a nation built on the principles of justice and property rights, a dark cloud looms over the Supreme Court's latest decision. Two Alabama women found themselves caught in a legal nightmare, their cars seized by police without any proof of wrongdoing. The court's ruling has sent shockwaves to the country, leaving innocent property owners vulnerable to abuse and indefinite losses. So brace yourself for a special report that will shake the very foundations of our justice system and your property rights. Now, before we dive into this alarming Supreme Court decision, let me tell you about a device that's helping me fight back against greedy utility companies. Just like the innocent car owners facing unjust seizures, we're all feeling the squeeze of the rising AC bills. That's why I'm using this mini AC unit to slash my cooling costs and keep more money in my pocket. It's a lifesaver during heat waves and blackouts. So visit easysummercool.com or click the link in the description for up to 60% off today with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and fast USA shipping. Now, in a decision that has sent shockwaves through the legal community, the Supreme Court has ruled that when police seize properties such as cars from individuals not even accused of crimes, they are not required to, a, to provide a prompt hearing. The 6-3 ruling came as a result of a case involving two Alabama women, Hel, uh, Helena Cully and Lena Sutton, whose cars were taken by law enforcement in drug-related incidents, despite neither woman being involved in any illegal activity. Now, Sutton had lent her car to a friend who then was detained by Leesburg, Leesburg, Alabama police for trafficking methamphetamine. The police seized the vehicle without uh, leaving Sutton without transportation for a staggering 14 months. Now, during this time, she was unable to find work, pay her bills, or even attend crucial mental health appointments as her attorneys stated in court documents. Watch. The Supreme Court saying, hey, if you lent your friend your car, they were arrested, drugs were found on them, uh, the car was taken by the police, you don't have rights to get that car back, you weren't involved, there's no allegation that you were involved, you're just SOL. That combined with the fact that there's this huge acceleration of how many police officers are going to be on the street, the crit criticism of police officers during actual emergencies like Uvalde, and then contrast to when the police seem to be really engaged and really active and deployed and weaponized against uh, people who are demonstrating their free speech rights. I mean, should people be concerned about the ratcheting up of police at a time when crime is coming down because it seems to be a pretext for using police for other kind of anti-democratic behaviors? Yeah, these, uh, this Supreme Court case is uh, very troubling for fans of civil liberties. Uh, it is, as you said, that the case is involved. Um, uh, two examples where someone who wasn't even the owner of the car was charged with a drug-related crime while driving the car. And in the one case, it was, it was marijuana possession and drug paraphernalia, something that a lot of people, myself included, don't even think should be illegal in yeah. the first place. And then they seized the car, and then it took this woman, she was the mother of the person who was driving the car, it took her, she did get the car back, but it took 20 months. Yeah. So this case was whether you had, you know, right to a speedy trial, mm -hmm. well, should that, shouldn't that apply to if they just take your, and, and they can take and keep your car for months, or, I mean, they try to keep it for years. Some of these states, now state laws have gone on the books in many places to stop that practice. Um, but this question was, well, does the Constitution already say you have to at least have a speedy trial if they're going to try to keep the stuff? And the Supreme Court, unfortunately, even though many of the conservatives, uh, Gorsuch and Thomas, had in previous cases expressed some skepticism about this practice, nevertheless said there was no right to a speedy trial in this case, which is, uh, which is deeply unfortunate because the police in, in many states, again, if there's no protection against asset forfeiture, they can keep your stuff even if they never charge you with a crime. Now, similarly, Cully had provided her son with a car to drive to college, only to have it seized by Satsuma, Alabama police when they discovered a loaded handgun and marijuana inside. The son was charged with marijuana possession, but the car remained in police custody, leaving Cully without her property. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, writing for the conservative majority, stated that while civil forfeiture hearing must take place in a timely manner to determine if an owner will lose their property permanently, the Constitution does not require a separate hearing to decide whether police can temporarily retain seized assets. Now, the decision has faced strong criticism from liberal members of the court, with Justice uh, Sonia Sotomayor authoring a dissenting opinion. She highlighted the potential for abuse within the civil forfeiture system, as police departments have had a financial incentive to hold on to seize property. She warned that in short, law enforcement can seize cars, hold them indefinitely, and then rely on owner's lack of resources to forfeit those cars to fund agency budgets, all without any initial check by a judge as to whether there is a basis to hold the car in the first place. 
Now, the ruling has also drawn criticism and concern from Justice Neil Gorsuch, who, despite joining the majority, issued a statement alongside Justice Clarence Thomas questioning the broader application of civil forfeiture. Gorsuch noted that the practice has become a booming business and suggested that the court should consider whether modern civil forfeiture aligns with constitutional guarantees of due process in future cases. Now, this decision has left many Americans wondering about the true state of our justice system, as the notion of innocent until proven guilty seems to have been replaced by a system that punishes property owners without any proof of wrongdoing. As civil forfeiture continues to be a contentious issue, advocates for reform argue that greater protections are needed to safeguard the rights of innocent property owners caught in the crosshairs of the legal system. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. It's time for my final thought. The Supreme Court's decision in this civil forfeiture case is a reminder of the urgent need for legal reform. When innocent property owners can have their assets seized indefinitely without due process, it strikes at the very heart of our constitutional rights. As Americans, we must demand change and hold our justice system accountable. And only by addressing these glaring injustices can we restore faith in the principles of fairness and equality under the law. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.